Hello everyone, my name is Ayush Manish Agrawal and today I'll be discussing about the investigating learning in deep neural networks using layer-wise weight change. This is a joint work with Atharva Tendle, Harshwardhan Sikka, Sahib Singh, Amir Kaid at Manifold Computing. So let's start by talking about the motivation for this paper. Various approaches have emerged that take advantage of the learning behavior of deep neural networks to improve their computational cost or reliability through interpretation. For example, transfer learning is a paradigm that focuses on transferring knowledge across domains. This often involves fine-tuning neural networks that have previously been trained in a related domain to solve a new target task. Uh, this offers several advantages over training new networks from scratch on the task as the prior learned parameters allow the networks to learn the new tasks faster. This points to a natural question. Do different layers in neural network converge to their learned features at different times in the training process? To answer this question, we wanted to understand the bird layer dynamic of neural networks and how does learning change in neural networks as we go forward in training? It is also important to determine if there exists a common learning trend and interpret how different architectures affect the learning of a neural network because this can be of significant importance as, provide, as this provides a potential for better training regimes. Our contribution for this paper are as follows. Uh, we provide a metric to track the relative weight change in a given neural network layer on an epoch by epoch basis. We present relative weight change as a proxy for layer wise learning with the assumption that when the weights of a network have minimal change over a set of epochs, they are converging to their optimum. We track the relative weight change of several popular convolutional neural network architectures uh, on four benchmark data sets. The learning dynamics are analyzed from the perspective of relative weight change for complex and simple learning tasks. While deep learning explainability is an active area of research, there has been limited research in understanding layer level trends in neural networks. Most of the work done so far in this context has been focused towards feature visualization of neural networks. So starting off by talking about our metric relative weight change. To better understand the layer-wise learning dynamics through the training process, we introduced a metric known as relative weight change. Re relative weight change can be understood to represent the average of absolute values of the percentage change in the magnitude of given layers' weight. The L1 norm provides the difference in magnitude of a single layer's weight during the previous step, and following this, an averaging step is applied to get a single value of relative weight change across the given layer. We show that smaller changes in RWC value over time indicate that layers' weights are nearing optimum and vice versa. Uh, this image uh, depicts how RWC looks in a, as uh, formerly. We use four data sets, C410, C400, MNIST, and FMNIST. MNIST is a comparatively easier task to solve. Fashion MNIST and CIFAR-10 provide new levels of complexity in image content and detail, while CIFAR-100 has significantly more classes and fewer samples per class that ramps up the difficulty. Our experimentation strategy. In general, uh, we kept consistent with the training strategies as the respective papers we used stochastic gradient descent with momentum for all of our experiments. We also kept the learning rate constant throughout the experiments um, as it made interpretation easier. To interpret layer-wise learning, we calculate 
RWC for every layer at each epoch and plot it. Then we run these experiments multiple times with different seed values and average the results for relative weight change to reduce the possibility of observing certain trends that might have occurred uh, because of the randomness of initialized weights. We include empirical results and analysis of layer-wise weight changes collected through experimental, experimental approach as I described previously. Uh, results are broken down by overall architecture uh, with trends highlighted for different data sets. We start off with talking about residual networks, uh, which is ResNet 18. Then we talk about a deeper architecture, VGG 19. And lastly, we will discuss about AlexNet. To start off with uh, ResNet, we'll discuss C410 and C400. In C410, we noticed a very interesting trend. Block one of the networks exhibits lower relative weight change over the duration of the training compared to the block two, while block two resembles a lower relative weight change compared to block three. This follows our intuition that in convolutional neural networks, the earlier layers learn fe general features faster. Interestingly, we noticed that block three and block four have exhibit have similar behavior um, in the relative weight change throughout the training. This is interesting, um, and I'll I'll discuss I'll come to that after I show you the results for C four hundred. In C four hundred, we noticed the same trend initially that block one has a lower relative weight change compared to block two, and block two has a lower relative weight change compared to block three. In C400, we notice that block three has comparably lower relative weight change compared to block four. Now, if we look back at C410, we notice that block three and block four had similar behavior in the relative weight change throughout the training. Um, we believe that there's an interplay between the complexity and the behavior or of relative weight change in the later layers of deep, deep neural networks as, the, uh, as we can see here. Um, in general, we do notice that later layers demonstrate an increased relative weight change as compared to the earlier layers of networks, but towards the last block of uh, residual networks, as the complexity of the task increases, the, the last block of residual networks um, starts uh, behaving a little different. I'll, I'll summarize these further um, after I've done explaining the different architectures and the results on different architectures. Now, coming to VGG. VGG on CIFAR 10 um, sh showed similar trends with uh, earlier layers showing low relative weight change compared to uh, the later layers. Um, as you can see, later layers in VGG 19 have a smaller relative weight change compared to the middle layers. Um, we, this this pro, uh, proves our previous uh, hypothesis that due to the complexity of the task as CIFAR 10 is a comparatively easier task, the later layers uh, representation is not being fully utilized given how deep VGG is, and that's why the relative weight change is comparably lower than the middle layers in VGG. On C400, we notice that the general magnitude of relative weight change on the y-axis is higher compared to 
CIFAR 10 because of the complexity of the task. Now, here we notice the similar trend, but a slight difference with later layers behaving similar to the middle layers. This again follows to the same trend that we saw in ResNet 18, where as the complexity of the task increases, the later layers start using more representations and utilizing, uh, utilizing more of the representation throughout the training, showing increase in the relative weight change on an epoch by epoch basis. Uh, and now we talk about AlexNet on CIFAR 10. Um, AlexNet shows the same trend where the early layer have the lowest um, relative weight change throughout the training. The later layers interestingly show a significantly lower relative weight change compared to the middle layers that show an increase in relative weight change throughout the training. Uh, we noticed this trend uh, for AlexNet in both MNIST, uh, both, both CIFAR 10 um, and, 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 and CIFAR 100, but again, the difference being the later layers being utilized more um, for CIFAR 100. Um, the accuracy on AlexNet for CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 is significantly lower uh, because of AlexNet being a much shallower network. In summary, uh, we noticed that using RWC as metric, later layers usually have higher relative change in the weights throughout the training. The early layers stop learning after the point of training. Um, as I showed to you uh, through different trends, that there also exists a relation between the complexity of the task and how the relative weight change occurs in the layers. We noticed this difference significantly as we move from C410 to C400. On simpler tasks, the later layers exhibit lower relative weight change as compared to the middle layers of the network and vice versa. For our future directions, um, as we have noticed a very interesting trend between datasets and architectures using RWC, we believe that understanding this further on a large scale could help determine better learning metrics for neural networks. The simplicity of relative weight change allows this metric to be used in different domains like NLP, RL, meta learning, and so on. We are further scaling our investigation on much complicated tasks like ImageNet and bigger networks like ResNet50 and so on. Um, we are trying to determine a higher level trend if there exists one um, in general convolution neural networks. We will also try to utilize this metric and the knowledge that we have gained uh, from these learning trends in different tasks like pruning and freezing. Um, I want to thank you all uh, for listening to me today. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.